Oh man, listen, hopefully this is not gonna be a long video, man. I just had to do this video because I got a comment in my comment section the other day. You remember the other day I dropped that video, that classic video, take a look up on the screen. Women say their black sons are not allowed to date white women. And in that video, I got a comment from one of my subscribers that said this, she said this. It's okay for black women to date out because the women take the wealth when you guys marry outside the race. You guys give white women the wealth. We barely have any. This is why it's bad when black men do it. It's about the money. Now, I went back and forth with this chick in the comment section for a little bit. And then I just stopped because I realized she's just a typical hypocritical female who just wants to date white men and then gets upset when black men do the same exact thing. Now, but that's besides the point. Today, we're going to talk about Tina Turner. We're going to talk about Tina Turner. And as you can see from the headline, it says this. Tina Turner's husband will inherit nearly half of her $250 million fortune. Yes, indeed. And as you can see, Tina Turner's husband is this gentleman right here who goes by the name of uh, Irvin Bach or something like that. I'm not too familiar with him. But today, we're just going to be going over some of the reactions on social media. For example, take a look up on the screen. This brother right here said, Tina Turner's white husband is taking 50% of her wealth. And Dr. Umar Johnson has not made a YouTube video expressing outrage over this. If Tina Turner was a black man and a white woman was taking 50% of his wealth, Dr. Umar Johnson would be expressing his outrage on social media. And not just Dr. Umar Johnson, brother, but also the fake pro-black women. Oh my God, the black man, you know, the white woman is taking all the wealth. We got to keep the black wealth inside the family. We got to keep the black wealth inside the community. We got to keep the black wealth inside the race. You know what I mean? Listen, we already know how it goes, man. But when, when the table is turned, when the table is on the other end, all of a sudden, everybody is understanding all of a sudden everybody understands why the white people should take the wealth even though listen man listen we're gonna get into it today man let's get into it man now in today's video i'm gonna go a different direction i'm gonna show y'all how from a, from an extremely young age from the beginning of tina turner's life she has been making white people rich right starting when her father was a sharecropper and she actually recalled tina turner actually said when she was a young girl she remembers picking cotton as a young girl so as a young girl she was picking cotton so that goes to show from an early age, white people were capitalizing off Tina Turner's labor, right? And then she grew up, she became a singer. As you know, Tina Turner did not start her own record label. She was not a record executive. She was signed to a white music label. So the white people were capitalizing off her musical abilities, and they got rich off of that too. And many people don't know this, but towards the end of Tina Turner's life, she actually signed away all of her music rights. She signed away her entire music catalog for a lump sum amount of cash. So she sold all of her music back to the white folks, even though the white folks made money off her music throughout her entire career. And then towards the end of her life, her white husband ended up cashing out off her estate over a hundred million dollars. You know what I mean? So at the end of the day, um, Tina Turner basically spent her entire life helping white people become more rich and powerful. That was really her entire existence on the earth was to help white people become more dominant, more powerful, more wealthy until her very last breath. That's just the facts of the matter. Since she was picking cotton as a sharecropper up until when she was a, a worldwide singer signed to the white music label up until she died and her white husband took all her money. And she doesn't have any kids. All of her kids, I believe all of her biological children passed away before she did. So she doesn't even have any black children to pass anything down to. She doesn't have any descendants. Her husband is really, she doesn't have no descendants. You know what I mean? So listen, the, the white music label got rich. The white farmers, you know, the white farmers and the white agriculturalists got rich when she was a sharecropper. The white label got rich. And considering she sold her entire music catalog back to the white folks a few years before she died, they're going to continue monetizing her entire catalog, her entire streaming catalog. They're going to continue selling her music, selling her likeness, selling her image and continue getting rich for eternity long after she's dead. So at the end of the day, I'm not going to talk about her white husband. I'm going to talk about how Tina Turner's entire existence was helping white people become more rich. That's really what that's really what it comes down to. And I had to make this video because that comment in my comment section, you know, I hear that from women so much, man. You know, oh, the black man giving away the wealth, the black man giving away his wealth. But when Tina Turner happens, y'all don't keep the same energy, though. Y'all don't keep the same energy. Now, let's take a look at some of these reactions on social media. You see this brother right here. He, he's actually responding to a tweet that says this. Tina Turner sold her music catalog. And this brother said, damn. So not only did Tina Turner give her wealth to a white man, she sold off future generational wealth to the jewels. You know, y'all know what he means by the jewels. You know, I'm not going to say it. You know, yeah, the jewels. Yeah. And guess what? The people that she sold her catalog to, they're not going to sell it. They're going to keep it forever. They're going to keep that inside the family. They're never going to sell it. And they're definitely not going to sell it to no black folks. <laughs> listen, man. Listen, man. Tina Turner's entire existence was to get white men rich. Like, she was a young girl up until she died. All she did was help white men get rich, bro. That's all she did. That's all she did. That's the, her only purpose in life. That's crazy, bro. That's wild, man. 
And I told y'all, man, I told y'all, men who come from elite families, men of elite status, they typically date inside the race, right? The most powerful men in the world, you'll see they date inside the race because they're not going to give their family treasures away to someone outside the family, to someone outside the race. They're going to keep it inside the bloodline. You know what I mean? When you see guys date outside the race, it's usually average guys, you know, average regular guys, guys who don't really have too much going on. And even when you read the story of how Tina met her husband, Erwin, actually, when they met, I believe Tina was going to an airport and he picked her up from an airport like the label sent him to go pick her up like a driver or something like that. Like he was a young guy in his late 20s. Like when he met Tina Turner, he was a young guy working for the label. He was like a driver or some shit like that. He was a driver who came to pick up Tina and Tina. She actually, she actually came on to him. If you read the story, Tina Turner, it wasn't him who made the first move. Tina Turner was the one who pursued him. She was pursuing this white boy. You know what I mean? The white boy, he was just doing his job, picking her up from the airport. She was the one who was thirsty for him. And he didn't have nothing going on back then. He was just a driver working for the label. It's crazy, man. Listen, listen, this, this white boy cashed out, man. White boy cashed out, man. Listen, it's crazy. Think about this for a second. Later on in his career, her husband actually worked himself up the ranks and became an executive at the label. So he was an executive dating one of his artists, right? Married to one of his artists. So not only did he cash out and personally, you know, grab over a hundred million dollars of her money, the label that he was in charge of was already capitalizing and generating millions of dollars off of her catalog. And then she sold her catalog. So this is like, is this a conflict of interest? Like, is this a conflict of interest? I don't know. But yes, she was married to an executive at her label who was originally a driver but became an executive and then she actually gave her wealth to that same executive of that same label who was capitalizing off of her music in the first place <laughs> so this brother capitalized double time man this is double time yo wow all right man let's get back into it this person right here said the white man played the game the way it should be played that's a fact man think about it they had tina turner picking cotton as a young girl right cashing out off of that she became a multi-millionaire worldwide singer signed to the white music label cashed out off of that she sold her catalog back to white man cashed out off of that married a white man give the money back to a white man at the end of her life cashed out off of that listen at the end of the day man the white man won man say what you want the white man won from beginning to end the white man won tina turner was a slave her entire life the white man won let's continue this lady right here says tina turner had four sons two biological sons are dead and two adopted sons she raised michael and ike are still alive Tina was the only mother they really knew. She has grandchildren from all four. Like it says in the OG article, her will leaves them nothing. Now, listen, bro. Listen. Like I said, man. Like I said, the white man won, bro. The white man won. What's that um what's that lyric from Kanye West? What's that lyric from Kanye West in his song It All Falls Down? Let's let hey, take a look up on the screen, man. We buy our way out of jail, but we can't buy freedom. We buy a lot of clothes, but we don't really need them. Things we buy to cover up what's inside. Cause they made us hate ourselves and love their wealth. That's why Shorty's holler where the ball is at. Drug dealer by Jordan crack, head by crack. And the white man get paid off of all of that. Hey man. Hey man. Facts. Listen, bro, that's why I don't really mix and mingle outside of my race, man. I got family treasures that I'm trying to protect. I'm not about to give my family treasures away outside the family, outside the race, man. We consolidate in this power. We consolidate in this wealth. We're not selling nothing. We're not selling nothing off. We keeping everything inside the family, bro. I swear to God. Now, this lady right here said, this woman died and came back alive when she moved to Switzerland. Her husband deserves whatever she left him. He was true love to her and brought her the most beautiful peace. Now you see, brothers, when the tables are turned, right? If it was a black man, they gave a white woman damn near $150 million. They would have never said, oh, but you know, that white woman brought that man the most beautiful piece and he brought him back alive. And when he went to Europe, you know, he got a second life. And, you know, that woman deserves every single dime. You see, the reason why I was inspired to make this video was from that comment that I got a couple days ago. That lady came into my comment section and said that it's a bad thing for black men to deal outside the race because black men give their wealth away to white women. And now look at this, this black woman saying, oh, but the white man brought her the most beautiful piece. And take a look at this interaction right here, man. Take a look up on the screen. This brother responded to that tweet and he said this, your opinion is biased since you date white men. And she didn't even respond. All she could do is laugh because I'm assuming that was a factual statement. That's why the only thing she said was, LOL. You see, man, you see, you see, I guarantee if it was a black man, this same woman who said 
oh, that white man brought her the most beautiful piece. She would have been talking like Dr. Umar Johnson if the tables were in reverse. She would have been talking about the black generational wealth that is lost through interracial marriage and the black community. You know, the wealth is decreasing in the black community and we got to keep the wealth and the power inside the black community. But when the tables are in reverse, all of a sudden it's, oh, but you got to understand, you know, the white man, you know, he brought her back to life. You know, when she went to Europe, you know, brought her the most beautiful piece and he was the true love of her life. And listen, that's why. That's why you don't go back and forth with women, man. That's why you don't go back and forth and debate them. And, you know, like, man, listen, man. This is why you don't take them serious, bro. Now, let's continue. Take a look up on the screen. This brother right here said she gave $250 million to white people when they have enough. I hate this place. No, 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 brother. She did not give $250 million to white people. You got to understand, when you accumulate all of her revenue that was generated from touring, from merchandise, from her image, from record sales, from appearances, from movie appearances, from TV appearances. You have to understand. And on top of that, she sold her image and her music rights back to those same white people who are generating a profit off her entire career from the beginning. So, no, she did not give them 250 million. She most likely gave them 200 billion with a B when you think about the money that's going to be accumulated in the future and the money that was accumulated in the past and the money that's accumulated right now and the money she gave away to her white husband. She gave billions, billions, potentially trillions when you come back later down the line because I told you the people that she sold her, her catalog to, they're not going to sell it. They're not going to sell it. They're going to keep it. They're going to keep it and they're going to generate profit from it. So she gave billions, potentially trillions to white people, man. You got to think. You got to think going all the way back to when she was a young girl who was a sharecropper picking cotton all the way when she was putting out albums and, and multi-million dollar hit singles going all the way back to when she was touring all around the world going all the way back to when she gave her estate away to her white husband and when she sold her catalog bro that's billions bro that's billions that's billions and guess what those same white people that made that profit they're gonna keep that money inside the family. They're gonna keep that money inside the race. They're gonna send their kids to they gonna send their kids to university. They're gonna have their kids riding private jets. They're gonna be rich and powerful for eternity. And her descendants, well, she doesn't have any descendants, but the black community she came from is gonna remain in the same position of poverty and destitution. It is what it is, man. Let's continue. <laughs> this dude said, I'm so happy to see white men win. <laughs> hey man, listen. Hey, it is what it is. You got to say the white man won in this situation. The white man won undisputed, undisputed facts. The white man came out on top. The white man came out victorious. The white man came out victorious in this entire scenario. Let's continue. This dude said she said she grew up picking cotton just to die and make white folks even more money. Wow. I don't have nothing to say. I'm not going to make this video too long. I think you guys kind of get the point. And that's why I don't date outside my race, man. That's why I don't date outside my race. Because I understand how hard my grandparents and my parents work to establish what they've established. And I'll be damned. I'll be damned if I die and I leave all my family treasures to a goddamn white woman. I'll be damned. I'll be damned, bro. I'll be damned. And to be honest, you know, I'm not that big of a fan of Tina Turner anyway. I seen an interview one time where she was talking about when she made some comments when she went to go when she went to go perform in Africa to South Africa during apartheid. And she made some extremely ignorant comments about the african continent about african people so tina turner she was she wasn't ever someone who was pro-black tina turner was a goofy tina turner was a goofy she was a sellout you know she kissed white people's ass her entire life you know she kissed white ass her entire life so it shouldn't come as a surprise to anybody that she ended up giving billions and billions and billions of dollars to the white community because tina turner was somebody who kissed white ass she kissed white ass she had an inferiority complex she did not she did not have high self-esteem as a black person she kissed white ass. She was a white ass kissing type of person. So don't be surprised. That's why when the label sent her husband, a damn driver, to go pick her up at the airport, she ended up chasing after this white man. The white man didn't even have to bag her, didn't even have to court her. She was chasing the white man because this was somebody who kissed white ass. She's a white ass kisser. So at the end of the day, it is what it is, man. Rest in peace, Tina Turner. You know, the white man won. The white man going to live good for the rest of eternity. The white man going to have this generational wealth inside his family for the next, you know, 500 years. So, shout out to the white man. You know what I mean? Shout out to the white man. It's your boy Nefakari Desaline. Back in the building. Yes, indeed. Like, share, subscribe. Cash app up on the screen. And I'm gone. Peace.
left on a horse and came back in that ass And I left with abundance and came back to famine We used to be pyramids, now we be rapping Look how the mighty have fallen Used to be running, now we be walking When you be cooning, that's when they applauded Selling your soul, your sons and your daughter Gotta come up in this shit, they stuck in the mix Really, my heart, it be breaking That's why I'm stacking that paper and handle my business Pass it down in generation Talking about money and power and building a nation That's a deadly combination Never be watching the TV, they pushing the genus Falsifying information, know they got malice intentions Step in the room and I'm feeling it Attention. Enemy watching me blocking my vision Pay for the check cause I need my redemption Building my kingdom, I need to protect it Ready for war like a young money Congo Never decided the team is the motto Up in the crib and I'm whipping up waffles Up in the crib and I'm smoking gelato I'm chilling, I'm taking my pain and make it ambition I'm blessed by the gods, but I ain't religious I came for the power, they came for the bitch They make a no hourly wage, I got business This shit is an art, and they could never be taught Selling my soul, I can never be bought Play with my money, I see you ain't caught Run to the check and I do it for sport Babylon falling, I go to the source, packing my luggage and go overseas. Shorty be with me and she so at least. Shorty be charged that I'm calling her Hershey. Secret intelligence probably gon' murder me. Don't fuck with brands, cause nigga, I'm Haitian. Say the wrong shit and you're smacking their faces.